Hallelujah. How many of you are hungry for the Word? I said, how many of you are hungry for the Word? Hallelujah. How many of you are hungry for the Word? Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, we have a preacher for you tonight. All the way from Austin, Texas. Brother Keith Clark has ministered in many, many, many camps. Well known throughout our fellowship. Used of God in a mighty way. And we are privileged to have him in the old Dominion state of Virginia. Why don't you welcome to this pulpit, Brother Keith Clark from Austin, Texas. We're so glad you're here, Brother Clark. Everybody, let's clap to the Lord, shall we? Hallelujah. Come on. Put your hands together. Everybody put your hands together. How many are excited about Mega Camp 1994? Turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, Good things are going to happen to you in this week. Good things are going to happen to you this week. Good things are going to happen to you this week. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, if you aren't ready by now, you better hurry up. This trains are pulling out tonight. Everybody better get on board. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord again. I've come to receive something from the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I've been preaching camps for a number of years. Preached all over the United States. I'm going to tell you, I don't know when I have been more excited than I am about this one camp. Now, I'm telling you, God is in this place. When I walked in this building tonight, I could feel the glory of the Lord. Come on, young people. Angels are here. The presence of the Lord is here. Somebody put your shouting shoes on. Put your garments of praise on. Pull out the stops. And help me love the Lord this week. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. I, 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 I just I came on this campground smiling. Some of you just better take your old frown off now and put you on a Holy Ghost smile because God's going to make you glad that you're a one God, Jesus' name, tongue-talking apostolic. I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to salvation. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's great to be in Virginia. This is my wife's mother's roots. She's from Big Stone Gap, Virginia, over near toward the Tennessee line. And I've always enjoyed getting to come through Virginia. It's a beautiful state. The hand of God is on this state. Hallelujah. It's revival time in Virginia. Aren't you glad you're a part of the great church of Virginia? Praise God. Amen. I am thrilled about this camp. Uh, over a year ago, I told my wife, I said, the summer of 94, I preached many camps. I said, the summer of 94, I'm, I'm going to preach one camp. And, and I, I just felt like God had some things He was going to do, which He already is. This summer is a very unusual summer for me and my wife. But I said, we're only going to have time for that. And one camp's coming in. And man, when they called me from Virginia, I got excited. Because I knew the first one that had the shot at me, that was going to be it. And I'm so glad that I'm here in Virginia getting to be with you young people. Hey, if I feel that way, how do you think God feels tonight? Well, come on, let's clap our hands to Him again. God's excited about being here with you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I'm glad to be here with Brother Rango. I, I, he, he, I, just being around him excites me. He's full of, of the things of God. And I appreciate him. Thank God for your youth president and his very fine wife. Hallelujah. Why are you doing great tonight? Well, I believe we've come to worship in this youth camp. Appreciate Brother Thompson. Uh, uh, amen. And what he's doing. I, I just feel like 
these leaders really have you in mind, and and I thank God for it. We're gonna we're gonna start this uh, camp off right. I, I can look at some of you, and and I can tell there's some baggage you need to drop right here in the beginning of this youth camp. Now there's some baggage you had to bring. You, you had to you had to bring some sacks and and, and suitcases with you know with clothes and toothpaste and and all that good stuff. But, but there's some other baggage that we brought to youth camp we're going, we're going to get rid of right here on the first night. Y'all ready to dump some things? How many really want to be free to love God? Now, how many really want God to give you some great Holy Ghost victory in your life? Amen. Well, I, I feel I've got a message from the Lord. You're never going to ever go to church again the same way after this message. You're never going to go to church again the same way. I, I, I'm going to tell you, God's going to give you a new way of going to church. Pick up your Bible. Let's look at the book of Job. Let's see how we are to go to church. Amen. The book of Job. It's great to be here with Brother Yance. Oh, I tell you, y'all going to have a great time in the morning with him. Oh, he touched a spot in my heart when he talked about Louis L'Amour. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I admit I don't read Harlequin and Romances. Though. But, uh, amen. But we all read the Word of God, don't we? The book of Job, the first chapter and the first verse. There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. Now, sixth verse. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Everybody say, among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Second chapter, first verse. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Revelation. Revelation, the 12th chapter. Revelation, the 12th chapter and the 7th verse. Revelation 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out. Hallelujah. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Looks like some extra baggage to me, doesn't it to you? Which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. But notice what happened, seventh verse. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and prevailed not. Everybody say, God whipped. Now I said, everybody say, God whipped. Everybody say, He got whipped. All right. Now some of you catching on here a little bit. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach tonight in the beginning of this great camp. It's going to be one of the greatest camps that you've ever been in. Not because I or Brother Yance are here, but because this is a camp of destiny. It's a mega camp. It's double dosage. It's 220. It's hot. It's right. It's ready. Come on, some of you. My God, have mercy. you got air conditioning in here. Now, I know you can break out a little bit of sweat. Hallelujah. Don't you go get lazy on us. I'm preaching tonight upon this thought of the devil is a hitchhiker. The devil is a hitchhiker. 
Now you've been having one way of going to church and you ain't going to go to church that way no more. Some of you have been putting up with some things and letting it go to church with you. And I'm telling you it's going to stop right here at this youth camp. We're going to get a new way of going to church. Church is going to get more exciting than you've ever known it before. You're going to be like David. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to youth camp. To the house of the Lord. Y'all excited back in the back? Y'all excited in the middle? How many excited up around the front? If y'all feeling well, we're feeling up here on this platform. Something good. I said something good is going to happen tonight. Woo. My God, I wouldn't have missed this youth camp for the whole world. Come on, Brother Rango. Pray. Bye. Let's pray, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, we lose faith in this house right now, God. We ask you, Lord God, for a work of the Holy Ghost in every young heart tonight, oh God. Lord, we command every barrier to be broken. Uh, let your anointing flow in this place. And Lord God, let us see the demonstration of your Spirit in this place, God. Lord, we believe you, Lord. We have faith in your power. Lord, we believe you're going to do great things. Lord, touch the man of God that you have chosen for this camp. Hallelujah, Lord. We believe it in Jesus' name. One more time, put your hands together. Come on, hallelujah. You better get ready to do a whole lot of this. We're going to be on our feet. We're going to be shouting unto the Lord. Come on, we're going to be praising God. We're going to put the devil where he belongs. And we're going to put God where he belongs. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. I have enjoyed being a preacher of the gospel. There's a lot of amenities that go with being a preacher of the gospel. And one of them is if you're an evangelist and uh, you get to travel. Then hardly any kind of a road that I hadn't been down in my life. I've traveled down interstates. I've been down state highways. I've been down farm to market roads. And uh, and, and I've I've been down some dirt roads that I didn't know where I was. I've been down just about any kind of road that you can think of. And almost without fail... You go down that road long enough and you're going to see that familiar person standing somewhere out on the side of the road with the thumb up. It's a world known symbol. When you got your thumb up, you're wanting to ride. And, uh, and, and everybody all over the world, I've been around the world, when you see somebody with a thumb up, they're saying, I'd like to ride with you. When my mom and dad gave me the keys to the car, they taught me responsibility. And one thing my mama told me was, Son, I I don't care how much sympathy you have, our world's changing. Don't pick up a hitchhiker. Boy, whatever you do, don't pick up a hitchhiker. Now, I I, I didn't understand, but I've lived long enough to understand that that, uh, hitchhikers can be trouble. You know something about a hitchhiker. Have you ever, anybody ever seen a hitchhiker on the side of the road before? Amen. You know, I'm not putting them down or degrading them, but most of them are just good old bums. Did you know that? Really, they are. They'll give you a good old sob story, but most of them are just lazy and don't want to work. You know what they want to do? They want to ride on your wheels. You pay for the gas, they're not going to pay for it. You pay for the insurance, they're not going to pay for it. And all they want to do is is take what you put out your good, hard-earned money for and say, would you please let me get in that vehicle with you and ride? Amen. And, and I read a story here a while back that really, really impacted me to know more that my mama understood what she was talking about when she said, don't let a hitchhiker ride with you. There was a young man that was coming back to college down in the state of Louisiana. And it was in the middle of a dark Louisiana night. He was coming down one of those uh, 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 Louisiana roads and, and it was somewhere up toward midnight or so and his headlights flashed across another young man that was standing there beside the road. And the young man had his thumb out. This college boy 
out of the benevolence of his heart said, well, he looks innocent enough and it looks like he needs a ride, so I'm going to stop. And he stopped somewhere on a dark Louisiana night. He let that young man get in that car with him. And here was the story that the perpetrator of the crime told later. He said, I got in with him. The first thing that a hitchhiker wants to do, if he's got something in mind to do you harm, is to get you comfortable with him. Where you let your guard down. He said, I didn't want him to know that I was carrying a pistol and I had a mind of doing him harm. First of all, the devil wants to get you with your guard down. You young people, listen to me. We put up with the devil when we don't have to put up with him. I'm telling you while we're driving the the roads of life you're going to find a devil somewhere along the way with his thumb sticking out saying can I ride I'm telling you some of you 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 wouldn't admit it but you've let the devil even trouble you here in this first service and I don't like it I don't like having a youth camp where I got to be looking over my shoulder wondering what the devil's up to so the first night we're going to take care of the hitchhiker Come on, y'all. You better get with me now. I said some of you have let the devil ride with you long enough. We're going to take time to put him out. Let me tell you something, young men. The devil will look innocent with a little bit of sin that he throws your way. Young lady, all he wants is just for you to compromise a little bit. Just stop long enough and let him get in the car and ride with you because he wants to talk to you. That young man said, I got the confidence of that young man that was driving the car. And after a while, he got comfortable and laid back. And that's when I pulled my pistol on him. And I told him, I want your car. He said, man, what do you want to do this to me for? He said, I stopped on that road to pick you up I'm not doing you any harm he said man you better pull the car over now he said I'll give you my car I'll give you what I have just don't take my life and so he made him pull the car to the side of the road and he said now get out of the car and that young college student began to beg for his life he said I want you to go into the woods he said man please don't shoot me he said take whatever I got but don't shoot me let me tell you something friend The devil is not interested in your money, in your clothes. Hallelujah. He's got one thing in mind. He knows he's going to hell and he wants you to go with him. You play with sin and with this hitchhiker, somebody is going to get hurt. Come on now, I don't know what kind of youth camp you want to have. If you want to play footsie with the devil, you go ahead. But there's something down inside of me that says, I want to get something from God. Friend, you can't clap your hands to Jesus and play footsie with the devil at the same time. You've got to make up your mind who you're going to serve. Praise God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We ain't struck fire with some of you yet. I know why. Because there's a devil sitting next to you. And I ain't talking about the young man or the young lady. There's a spirit that's been talking to you for a long time. And you put up with it. He begged for his life. But I'm telling you, friend, a killer's going to kill. And the devil's going to kill. And you can't put up with him. You let him ride and he's going to drive. He killed him, took the keys, took his car and went on his way. He didn't pay the price for that car. That young man paid the price for it. He didn't pay for those wheels and insurance and gas. That young man paid for it. But this guy, he hitchhiked. He killed him and took it for his own. I'm going to tell you what I've learned about the devil. The devil ain't going to fast one day. He ain't going to pray one moment in an altar. He ain't going to worship God not for one moment. He ain't going to do anything to consecrate to God Almighty. But I'm telling you what, friend, He'll ride on you as far as you let Him ride. I'm fixing to blow y'all's ever-loving mind. I know you ain't going to believe it, but it's true anyhow. There's only one way that the devil can get in the house of God. There's only one way that the devil can come to church. Because there's too much power. There's too much blood. There's too much work for him to get in here on his own. Hey, 
I'm here to tell you that the devil can't come to church when everybody's in one mind and one accord. Because, friend, he isn't going to give any glory to God. Y'all ain't with me yet. But you're going to get a new way of going to church. Hallelujah. You ain't never going to be the same again. This youth camp is going to change your way of thinking about God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Now we had to have the book of Job, I guess. I'm glad it was him and not me. And the book of Job has been a comfort to many a sorrowing soul. But I'm going to tell you folks... And please, I don't want to stretch it until you just can't believe it. But I'm going to tell you something. The book of Job did not necessarily have to happen. It really didn't. Because I'm going to tell you how it got started. The Bible says this. That the sons of God, which in translation most theologians believe means angels. That when angels came at appointed time before God... To give Him glory and honor. The Bible said, when those angels or sons of God came before the throne of God, that's when the devil slipped in. You may think that the devil can come before God any time he gets ready. But I don't think that. I don't believe that for one minute. But the devil, the hitchhiker, saw those angels headed for the throne of God. And somehow he got a ride on where they were headed. You know what they should have done? One of those angels on that way to the throne of God should have stopped and said, Wait a minute. There's somebody else slipped in here with us. I smell a rat in the wood pile. And I don't like what I'm smelling. It stinks to the high heavens. We ain't going another step until we find out who this intruder is. Y'all ain't with me. I know I've already blown some of your minds. Because you're so used to putting up with the devil. You think you know, you got to put up with him. Go to the house of God and be tormented and be tortured. I'm here to tell you, you have a God-given right to come on God's church place and ground and worship Him. And not have to put up with the devil. Sit down. Hallelujah. You're going to wait till Wednesday night till you get the victory, aren't you? That's what the devil's always told you. It takes Monday night and Tuesday night for you to pray through the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because we put up with Him. But on this first night, why don't we make up our mind? Come on, some of you. Why don't you tell that devil you ain't riding? Not Monday night. Not Tuesday night. Not Wednesday night. We're going to... My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I said, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Somebody lift your hands and worship God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Clark, I can't talk in tongues. It'll take till Wednesday or Thursday. Maybe Friday night. Yeah, you learn to put up with the devil. You may be seated. Folks, the devil is a hitchhiker. He cannot get in the house of God except somebody give him a ride. You know what happens? You get bent out of shape because your girlfriend said something to your other girlfriend about you. And your best buddy stole your best girlfriend. And and it so happens that all this happens about 6.30 midweek service. Ain't y'all figured it out by yet? Y'all ain't figured it out yet, have you? One hour before church, everything goes wrong. Your hair won't fix up right. Your car breaks down. Everything. Have you figured it out yet? That old devil is setting you up. He's got his thumb out. And he's saying, church night. 
Church tonight, will you let me ride? You need to tell the devil, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Get out of this room. Get out of this house. Get out of my life. Come on, honey. The devil knows when you got a made-up mind. He knows when you had enough of him. Hallelujah. You know what we need to do tonight? We need to take long enough to open that door and tell him, get out. Get out now. We're going to ride. We're headed for the throne of God. And you're not going with us. Praise God. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Satan rode with the angels. A conversation took place. Brother Yon said it didn't have to take place. It didn't have to take place. When the devil got to the throne, he got to talking about Job with God. Let me tell you something now. I I take care of business before I ever get to church. Now, now, I, I, y'all ain't listening to me. Y'all ain't listening to me. When I got troubles, and I got things that are bothering me, I do not wait till I walk through the doors of the house of God. You know what I tell God? I made a mess of it. I know I made a mess of it. I'm sorry for it. Forgive me. But God, when I go to church tonight, I don't want to be under condemnation. I don't want that accuser. When I go to church, I just want it to be me and Jesus. I don't want him and the devil to have a conversation. I just want me and the Lord together in the Holy Ghost. Am I over y'all's head? Huh? You may be seated. Am I too am I too deep for you? You know what the problem is? We're so used to the crutch. That when somebody comes along and says, Hey, you don't have to have that crutch. Man, we're about ready to pick the crutch up and knock him in the head. You ain't taking my crutch from me. I, I got to have a reason for complaining. I got to have a reason for being sour in the house of God. I got to have a reason for sitting through a youth camp and never getting right with God. I got to have a reason for losing the victory. Hey, folks, I didn't wait to come in here tonight to get the victory. I took care of it before I ever got here. I said, God, if there's anything between you and I, take care of it. Woo! I said, take care of it. If I smell a spirit, I'm going to stop and say, hey, devil. You may be seated. Do you know when people get hurt? People get hurt when they allow the devil to come to church with him. Job got in a pickle because some angels allowed a hitchhiker to ride to the throne of God. Now folks, you you can think whatever you want to think about the book of Job. I, I don't care. But I'm telling you, When the devil got access to the throne of God, Job got caught in the middle of a fight. I don't mind fights. I'm not afraid of them. And I I don't mind God doing what He's got to do. But I don't want that accuser in the middle of what God is trying to do in my life. Do not want him sitting on my shoulder.
when I come to youth camp, I don't want him coming. I don't want to hear him. I don't want to feel him. I don't want to smell him. I want him out of here. Get off of this campground. Get out of this building. Get out of our lives. Come on, some of you young ladies, some of you young men, you need to rebuke the devil. We're going to set it in order. From the first night, you got a right to shout and to dance and to worship your God. Somebody ought to leave for joy right now. You got a right woo, to clap your hands, to run the aisles. My God. Goodbye, devil. Goodbye. <laughs> Woo! My you may be seated in Jesus' name. You know what amazes me the most about the book of Job? Would you like to know what just blows my mind? You know what happened? They put up with him one time. And when it came a second time, do you believe they put up with him again? I can understand making one mistake out of ignorance. But to allow that stinking rotten spirit to hitchhike a ride again and let him come right on in. There was a dear precious sister some of you are afraid of your own shadow. I know that. Y'all ain't going to walk around here unless it's in gangs of three and four and five. But I'm going to tell you something. This is going to be a different youth camp. We ain't going to be looking for devils. We're going to be looking for angels and the power of God Almighty. We're going to take care of it the first night. We're going to tell Him bye-bye. Why don't we have that kind of a youth camp where for the first night we feel the glory? Come on, some of you, you're that close to talking in tongues right now. The devil has beat you down for so long. My God, why don't you lift up those hands and shout hallelujah? Woo! Hallelujah! Some of you need to throw the devil out. Oh! Hallelujah! Oh! Hurt me one time, shame on you. Hurt me two times, shame on me. You may be seated. He shot kata bahaya. Brother Clark. You don't know how bad it is. My mom and daddy don't know. My pastor don't know. I'm hanging on in this youth camp by a thread. I'm putting on a good show. But inside I'm hurting. I say with my mouth, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But I'm fighting for my dear life right here on the first night. For some of you, it's a miracle that you're even here at this youth camp. The devil did everything he could do to keep you from coming. Because he knew on this first night. He knew on this first night, he's going to have to find his own way back. You ain't going to ride on me anymore. Oh, y'all understand what I'm preaching tonight? How many are ready to come to church a new way? My God, what a youth camp. Woo! You young people love God and love the Word of God. And I feel like the devil is in trouble. Oh! 
You may be seated. You know, when I started learning this lesson, I was a teenager. It was on a summer in, in a meeting like this when I got the Holy Ghost. It was in the summertime at a youth meeting when I got my call to preach. Because I got saved and called to preach all on the first night. God changed me. I was a teenage boy between my first and second year of college. And God reached and touched my life. And when I got in the church, everything was great for a while. And after a little while, a few months, I felt an old spirit that I'd never even considered when I was in the world. It was just kind of draped over me. And, and I remember I was young in the church and I said, Well, I, I guess this is just part of my cross. To carry that old rugged cross, I just got to put up with this old spirit. It was such a nasty old spirit I didn't tell anybody. Because I didn't understand even what was going on. And I remember crying for months and months. I told God, I love you, God. I love you with all my heart. But why have you allowed this stinking, rotten spirit to get a hold on me like this? I didn't sin. It just went everywhere I went. Draped over me. Until I was getting tired and weary. And I told God, I said, I love you, God, but I'm just a baby. And I ain't been in this church but a few months. But this thing is killing me. And I'm tired of him. And I remember, friend, fighting him. But there was no strength in me. But I remember on a Wednesday night. Mm, I'll never forget it. I can't explain it, but something happened to me that I'll never be the same again. Whew. Oh, it was just a Bible study night. It wasn't a revival night, it was just Bible study night. But I kept going to the house of God, putting up with that thing. Brother Rango, something happened out on the front porch of that church in Texas, Texas. I'll never forget it. I could hear them singing. I said, they're singing about joy that I don't have. And I said, I'm sick of you, devil. But that's as far as it ever went. But something happened that night. And I said, I'm a baby in the Lord. And I don't know how to fight you. But I'm telling you this one thing. By the authority of the Word of God... You stay here. I'm going in there. Oh my God. I couldn't believe it. He crawled off of my back. He took his claws out of me. And he stood right where I commanded him to stand. Honey, you ain't never seen singing in all of your life like I sang that night. Dead dog Bible study. Uh-uh. I shouted. I worshipped. I was free. Come on now. Whom the Son of Man has set free, He is free indeed. Oh. You may be oh my shaka you may be seated. Whew. Lord help us. Y'all ready to go to church a new way? Y'all ready to come to youth camp a new way? A lot of people can't get the victory till Thursday night, maybe Friday night. It's a last gasp effort. My God, what's gonna happen around here when on the first night everybody's gonna leave out of here saying, Yes! 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 Greater is He that is in me than he that is in the world. Whew. Hallelujah. My God, now turn around and shake somebody's hand and say, Are you getting it? Woo! Honey, you may not be, but the devil is. I feel him a trembling. I feel him a shaking. I hear him right now saying, Oh no, I ain't going to get in this youth camp. Oh no, they're going to come before Jesus free, delivered. 
my God. You may be seated. I knew those saints must have thought their new baby had lost his ever-loving mind. But it felt so good to be able to walk in the house of God clean. Some of you don't feel that way yet tonight. Some of you still feel dirty. You feel unclean in your mind and spirit because there's something just hanging on you. Well, everybody left church. It's just me and the pastor. And up to this time, I dreaded being left alone in a dark church. I was so afraid because in my mind, I've always thought when there's so much victory and power, so much glory, that when the last apostolic is gone out the door, the demons come crawling in and they dance all over the altar and they do their little jinx all over the house of God. And they whoop and they holler because there ain't no apostolics there. That ain't true. That ain't true. I'm telling you, you're going to get a new way of going to church. Some of you after tonight, you ain't going to be afraid to walk in the house of God on a dark night. Hallelujah. And walk right down the middle of the aisle and say, Hallelujah. Feels good. y'all you got power in that right heel of yours to put it on the devil's neck and say by the name of Jesus Satan I bind you by the power of the Holy Ghost go you may be seated boy I like hearing all those chairs scoot isn't that neat Man, that means you've been on your feet. We need to get that on the tape. Every time you sit down, you see him scoot. That means you're not a deadhead. You've been up on your feet. Loving God. So the pastor said to his new baby convert, Bye. You shut the church down. Oh, God, don't do that to me. And so my pastor left. All saints was left, and I'm left alone. So I'm standing there, putting my hands on the lights, and I'm going, oh dear God. I forgot. I was so happy, I forgot. I left Him out on the front porch. I said, oh Jesus, I hate putting up with Him. God, do I have to put up with that stinking rotten spirit? I really did. This really happened, folks. I remember just sure as a world, 19 years old, Boom! I turned the lights out. Took my time walking out of there. Because I didn't think he was in there. I knew he was out on the porch. And this is how it happened. I stepped out on the front porch. I said, okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. I really did, folks. I'm telling you God's truth. I turned a complete 300, and what is it, 60 degrees? North, south, east, west. And I looked for that devil, and this is what I did. I said, God, where is he? He said, son, he's gone. And he'll never be back. that spirit again. You know what I feel in you right now? I feel some devils that are crawling out of here right now. Y'all gonna let me preach tonight? Are we gonna get a new way of coming to church? Are we gonna understand the power that is within us? You may be seated. Should I quit? 
Should I quit? Do you want me to preach a little more? Y'all feel something breaking in your spirit? How many already start to feel good on Monday night? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty! You may be seated. There is a young man that is right here and not too many rows back. You got a problem. There's another in here that I know already that's been tormented by pornography. And I know where you're sitting. You ain't the only one. There's some young ladies that some spirits have been moving in on you and you hadn't broke yet, but you're about to break. I'm going to tell you what you're going to do tonight. Those angels in the book of Job put up with them twice. I don't know why it took them that long. Why did it take them from Job to Revelation? But finally, in the book of Revelation, the book of revealing, the book of illumination, those angels said, you know what? What are those devils doing walking on our holy ground? Michael drew his sword. God, I got Holy Ghost chills all over me. Don't wait till the end to get the revelation that God will take care of you if you draw the sword. My God, young people, you don't have to wait till you're 40 or 50. You got power right now in you that is greater than all of hell. Put your hands together. Clap them. Clap them. Clap them. Clap them. Put your hands together. <laughs> you may be seated. Can I do this? Can I give you a new thought about clapping your hands? We are commanded to clap our hands to God, right? Have you ever had anybody... My God, do not do this in this youth camp. It'll ring their bell. I'm telling you, don't do this. I'm, I'm serious. I'm not playing a game with you. Have you ever had anybody take both of their hands and come up behind you and right on your ears go, pow! You just... Who am I? Where am I? Am I in Hawaii? Anarcha? Anarcha? So you know what I've told the devil? Buddy... You just mess with me. And I'm going to tell you something. Every time my hands come together, you're right in the middle of it. Pow! Come on, Youth Camp 1994! Here you go, devil! How do you like this? Woo! Come on, y'all! We're going to get his number. You're about to get power and victory like you've never known it before. Oh! All right, put your hands together. Clap them to the Lord. Tell the devil you're in the middle. Just play. Glory. You may be seated in Jesus' name. We're going to do some things tonight. And it's going to be meaningful in the Spirit. I'm no preacher like this out of oratory. 
that I get out of the book. I'm not a devil chaser. But I won't run from one either. I will fight. Because it's my right to cleanse the house of God. Any of y'all have been having trouble sleeping at night? Oh, I know it. I know you have. Any of y'all tired of crying yourself to sleep? What if God still loves you? What if God still cares about you? That ain't God doing that to you. It's not God doing that. It's a spirit. I was having a great revival. Night after night, I would feel this cold feeling come. I couldn't put my hand on it. I didn't know that that very house is where the largest witch of that town who had over 200 young people in her coven. Two hundred known young people in her coven. She was the most powerful spirit outside of God in that whole country. That very house is where they held some of their midnight meetings in the very next room where I was sleeping. The pastor lived up the hill in a home on top of the hill. He bought that house. He did not know what had gone on in that home and neither did I. And I would roll night after night until I would watch sometimes the sun come up. One night I heard a voice speak to me and say, They're coming. They're coming. I sat up in the bed and I said, Who's coming? I'm sick of them coming to this house. They're coming. They've been tormenting you night after night. And they said they're on their way back tonight. I said, let me tell you something. You have warned me. So I knew he was on my side. I'm telling you, I heard his voice. And I said, listen to me. I don't know who they are, but it's over. I said, I want you to go get some more angels. I want you to put one at the foot of my bed, and I want one at the head of my bed. I want you or whoever you will have in charge to stand at that door and when they come tonight, you tell them I'm not putting up with it another night. I'm going to sleep and I'm going to sleep all night long. Y'all ready to have a mega youth camp 1994? You may be seated. Come on now. I said, are you ready to have a mega youth camp 1994? Sit down. The pastor told me later on that next day. He said, what went on in that house last night? I said, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, 5.30 this morning, I was in my prayer room there at the front of my house a praying. He could look out his prayer room window down to the house where we were sleeping, me and my wife. He said, my God, son, what went on last night? I said, why? Tell me, what did you see? He said, about 5.30 this morning, I heard something like an explosion. I stopped praying, and I looked out the window. My Lord, I saw devils running out of that house. He said they were running, falling over one another, running as hard as they could go. He said they went down the ditch, they went up the hill, and they kept on running, looking back. Something was in that house. I said, yes, sir, it was the power of the living God. Somebody draw your sword. 
Somebody lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands right now. We're going to pray a little bit. I don't want to get in too much of a hurry because somebody's about to get liberty for now and forever. Come on, I want you to pray. 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 While the young people are praying, preachers, come up here. Come here, preachers. Come on, ministers. Oh, 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 y'all ready? I said, are y'all ready? Preachers, get up here on the platform first. Come on the platform first. Young people, lift your hands right now. Preachers, pray for one another. Ask the anointing of God to come on each other. While they're praying, I want every young lady to lay your hand on the shoulder of a young lady. Pray for her right now. Uh, come on, young man. Lay your hand on a young man standing next to you right now. Devil, you got to go. Pray, preachers, pray for one another. Devil, you got to go. Come on, saints, are y'all ready, young people? This My God, I feel an owl running, foot stomping, tongue talking. Are you ready to put the devil out? I said, are you ready to knock him out? I said, are you ready to give him that knockout punch? Everybody that's ready to put the hitchhiker out, get out of those chairs, get out in the aisles, come up around the front, just move. Preachers, you are anointed. Walk through these young people. My God, lay your hands on them right now. Get ready, folks. It's here. Oh, Satan in the name of the Lord. Young man, lift your hands and pray through. I said lift your hands and pray through. Pray, boy. Lift your hands. Call on the name of the Lord right now. Oh, Satan, you have got to go. There it is. Come on, there it is. Open your mouth. Praise the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus.